Sabbath School builds faith and practice through the daily study of the Holy Scripture. Welcome to the Sabbath School Lessons in the New Jersey Territory. Hello, my friends. The Sabbath School is a rich environment for the spiritual and transformative growth process to take place every week. Therefore, it is my privilege to return to you this week with the Sabbath School Lesson Panel to present to you the lesson number nine, entitled, A City Called Confusion. I'd like to remind our church members that the Adventurers event will take place this weekend, May 19th to 21st at Tranquility Camp. I also like to inform you that our camp meeting will take place next month, June 16th and 17th at Tranquility Camp. Our Sabbath School panelists will be there live. Do not miss it. Remember here in New Jersey, we love you. And together, we will go through Sabbath School making disciples. So, my friends, enjoy the lesson. All right, hello and uh, greetings to you in the name of our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is another week, another privilege uh, for us to come into your presence to uh, discuss another uh, Sabbath School uh, lesson. And so we are here again with our distinct uh, panel. All of us are back. And so we are happy that uh, we are together one more time. So if you're joining us for the first time, we would just like to introduce ourselves to you. And so we're going to start uh, with Pastor Boozy, who's going to introduce herself. I am Pastor Marie Boozy, and I'm serving at the Collingwood Park Church. As I'm all right, thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Peggy? I am Pastor Peggy Fullerson, and I am the Associate Pastor of Navinath the Haitian Seventh-day Adventist Church in North New Jersey. All right, and Pastor John Nico. Hi, I'm Pastor Fortunato Dredenico. I'm the District Pastor of Tom's River, Browns Mills, and High Sounds of Bay West. All right, thank you so much. And I am Pastor Sterling at the Academy Church uh, for Lake Nelson Adventist Academy. We uh, glad to be here with you. And so we are going to begin with a word of prayer and uh, Pastor uh, Janiko is going to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we can gather together to discuss your word. We ask and invite your Holy Spirit to enlighten us, to help us and teach us your ways. And we ask all this in the loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, so we're here on another journey. Uh, last week, uh, we were looking at uh, the Sabbath and the end of time. We, we saw how uh, the aspect of creator is being repeated all through the Bible. And uh, mm. the Sabbath command um, is anchored in that creation. Um, Jesus Christ is the creator of the world. And uh, we believe that that would be a, a cause of conflict as we come to the end of time. And so uh, we're heading now uh, with uh, lesson number nine, a city called confusion. All right, a city called confusion. Uh, who would like to live in such a city <laughs> that <laughs> is, is full of, uh, of, uh, of confusion? All right, so we know that there is uh, a war going on. Uh, uh, between good and evil. And the, the, the spiritual war that is going on, and sometimes we don't see, uh, we don't understand because we, we look at it from a physical standpoint, but as Paul said, we wrestle against principalities and power uh, in, um, in, high, in high places. Uh, and so we are now looking at, so let's go at uh, for our anchor text for this week. Uh, Matthew chapter, not Matthew, but Revelation chapter 17 and verse uh, 14. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. Revelation 17 verse 14 says, These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, 
for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Amen. Amen. So what, what, uh, what promise do we have from that verse? What can we hold on to here? That God is winning the war. He's winning the war. He is winning the war. He or he has already won him. Won. And sometimes it it it, it seems as if uh, we're in a losing battle, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we look at what is happening, uh, it, it seems as if uh, Satan is winning. Mm. Right? Uh, that's what it appears to be. Uh, because uh, people, so I, I was I was watching an ad this week. And the person was talking about joining the um, atheist uh, foundation or something like that. And mm -hmm. the freedom from religion, basically it is uh, mm -hmm. freedom from religion. And the person said, yeah, join us, join me um, because I'm not afraid to burn in hell, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. the, they, they're saying it as if, you know, hell is the is the only reason why you should be a Christian, right? So you, you come in a Christian because mm. you don't want to burn in hell. And I'm just saying how they, they uh, misunderstand the whole concept of what Christianity is and what God is. Because if it is only about hell, then that's, that's not, that's not uh, the real purpose of it. And when we look at what's going on in society today, it seems as if um, the enemy is winning. But this verse shows us that uh the lamb is the winner and if we if we stay with the lamb we are going to be on on the winning side we'll be on the winning side all right so let's get into uh mm. this this city uh that is full of uh, confusion so the bible tells us that uh let's go to daniel uh, i want to start in daniel uh daniel chapter daniel chapter one Because here uh, will give us a good foundation of of the of the war that is going on uh, between good and, and evil. All right. So Daniel chapter one. Uh, let's start reading from verse one. It says, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. All right. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yes, yes we, 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 I didn't specify, but we can st stop there for now. Mm -hmm. So, here we have two cities, Babylon and Jerusalem. And so the king of Babylon... Uh, went into Jerusalem and besieged it. And if you read on, it basically overthrew the city, took uh, 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 the children of Israel as slaves into, um, into Babylon. Babylon. So uh, here we have God's city, which is Jerusalem, and we have Satan's city, which is Babylon. Here, uh, the king went in and overtook that city. How is that possible? Hmm. For uh, the, the, the king of Babylon to go in and besiege that city. Um, what does that tell us? I did say every time they fail to follow his commands or worship other idols, um, that's that's there will there will always be another king that will come in. It's kind of like their consequence for failing to do what they're supposed to do. And so, and he talks about that in Deuteronomy, the different things that if they fail to do this, there will be a famine. If you fail to do this, then other um, nations will come overthrow you and all that. And that was their way of saying, that was his way of saying, you don't allow me to lead you and you're busy worshiping other people. That protection that he had given them, he is still around, but it kind of, it, was, it just kind of released a little um, so that they could understand what's happening and what, what protection he was giving them during that time. 
exactly exactly the case so now we're going to we, we we are going to uh so we have gas city Satan city uh which was really physical uh real places right uh, jerusalem and um and, and babylon now the lesson points out that uh the 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 tower of babel right uh represents um confusion now at the beginning it didn't represent confusion but why did it represent confusion at, at the end what was, that the was a time when that was when god he hindered their language from mm -hmm. understanding each other mm -hmm. and so when they were speaking they couldn't understand one another and that's why there was a lot of confusion there's no communication going on they they weren't united in a sense anymore any longer yep so you could imagine if they had one language or even if in our world today we had one language i mean uh this place would have been a, a more dangerous place right a wicked man would be able to accomplish a, a, a lot more uh all right so they were to add to it they were defiant they wanted to you know, reach to God, right? Yeah. They, yeah. They thought that, uh, you know, the flood is not going to get me anymore. <laughs> they wanted to build that tower so high. And God stopped the construction. <laughs> yeah. 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 Even though God promised with the rainbow that it would never happen again. And That's it true. shows that yeah. they did not trust in God's promise. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. They said, I'll save myself. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. That's pretty much what they said. <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely so so they did not so they did not abide by scripture mm, yeah so they, they basically uh brought in their own their own understanding of scripture and we're going to see this happening again in uh in in our society so so here is babylon um let's go back to daniel and see uh what you know what babylon did so now we're going to go to what happened after the 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 boys were rescued from um from the furnace right so let's go to daniel chapter three and if you pick up the story there uh to the end and verse 29 Let's read from verse 28, 28 and 29. Daniel chapter 3, verse 28 reads, Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angels and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other God can save in this way. Okay. All right, so here is Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Now, what do you think about his, his, uh, his uh, decree? Uh, was it a good thing? Or? Uh, parts of it was good that he acknowledged god of of daniels and shadrach meshach and benigo but the death decree i don't think was not really honoring god because that's not what how god really works once again he was trying to insert his um uh assert his control as king <laughs> so he was saying, this is what happened. I've learned something from this experience, but I'm still king. So now I'm going to tell you what you can do moving forward. This is how you're supposed to act moving forward. And he said the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not even, not even claiming it as now his God that he will now worship. It's the God of their God. You know, so it's still saying that there's multiple gods still that still exist the way he said it. You know, he was not yeah. confident yet at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here and see the truth for yourself and then make a decision he did not do that yeah although yeah. he saw what god could do it took him a long time but later on he 
He recognized God as the God of heaven after God went, made him go through so many problems in, in the wilderness. Mm. In the wilderness, yeah, yeah. And even during that fiery part, when he's saying there's a fourth person that looks like the son of God, so mm -hmm. the son of God, like he recognized that this could be the son of God, that this could be Christ. Mm -hmm. He sees that. And yet even then he's still, <laughs> yeah. he's still not convinced to be converted. To say be, this, this is my God that I will worship from now on. My God, right? Yeah, yeah. And when you read in his testimony, he he does acknowledge God as the most high God. Mm -hmm. So it's not really just, you know, Daniel's God or anything like that, but it's the God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So so then uh, we're talking about Babylon here um, uh, in, in, in Bible times. Now... Do you see any thing here that may be scary in terms of what modern Babylon uh, will do or will try to do? Mm. The same thing. Go on, Sister Bruzy. <laughs> modern Babylon will uh, persecute the children of God the same way that the old Babylon persecuted Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, mm. and Abednego. The same thing. They're going to mm. try to put the children of God in prison if they don't want to obey to the, you know, to man-made laws that they have. So mm -hmm. we are warned, but God will deliver just like he delivered the two, three Hebrew boys. Yeah, I, I think also that key thing, that interesting thing about Nebuchadnezzar, he, it seems like he was trying to honor God and he mm -hmm. still gave a death decree, forcing mm -hmm. people to, you know, not say anything bad about you know, you know, Daniel's God. Right. Yeah, right. so it's more like, all right, like, yeah, if so if you, yeah, so if you worship or you worship say anything you say bad anything. about, you know, the true God, then, you know, there's a death decree, you know, you, then, so I, I think there's a parallel also where I think the spiritual Babylon is going to force us to honor God the way they think mm -hmm. God is supposed to be honored, not the way God said he mm -hmm. should be honored through his word. And, and then there's going to be a death decree uh, tied to that. Yeah. And it's worshiping God um, based out of fear. Mm, yeah, God that's right. To, out of fear. To worship him out of love, it's going to be now based on fear, you know? Yeah. And so there, this is where people are going to be like, well, I am going to follow this decree, which is what happened um, with Nebuchadnezzar. They worship that idol out of fear to not be persecuted, you know? Yeah. So it's out of fear instead of love. And it's interesting that a lot of people, sometimes they leave Christianity because they think Christianity is a fear-based religion, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff indeed. Uh, so, so Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, as you pointed out, wanted to do something good for God. Right? So, <laughs> so I, I'm, going to, I'm going to force you uh, uh, to worship. But mm. we know that worship has to be by choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you can't you can force people to worship God. And so we believe that in the end time, that's what spiritual Babylon is going to do uh, with good intention. Right. Uh, we want you to, uh, for example, for the sake of the environment, uh, you know, after the pandemic, uh, they said that pollution was down as people were not driving a lot mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. what about if uh we just um use sunday as a, a rest day to, to save the environment you know um doing something doing something that is good so it's going to come about as as you're helping you're, you're helping god you're doing something is good and forced um and forced worship in that sense so yep. Uh, we see the connection with, with Babylon, right? So let's head now to Revelation. And um, uh, here we have two women, uh, one in Revelation 12 and, and one in Revelation uh, 17. So let's try to contrast these, these, two, uh, these two women here. All right, so uh, Revelation chapter 12, what do we see here um, for the woman? Let's read verse 1 and 2. Revelation 12 verses 1 and 2 says, 
Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. All right. Mm. So we have the woman, uh, she's a mother, and uh, she is pregnant, ready to give birth, all right? So let's compare that to Revelation uh, 17, 5. Okay, we have Revelation 17, 5, and on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abomination. Mm. All right, so we have a mother of prostitutes, uh, or a harlot, as some uh, a virgin would put it, uh, compared to um, a woman who is pregnant, ready to give birth. She has a crown. Um, she, she's cool with the sun and the moon under, under her feet. All right, uh, let's look at... Um, Let's compare, uh, we're going to come back to the woman for a second, but let's compare uh, Jerusalem and, and Babylon. Uh, so I'm going to jump to somebody to find Jeremiah 21, verse 9 and 10, and then someone, uh, Revelation 18, uh, 10. What was the, the first verse? Jeremiah 21, 9 and 10. Jeremiah chapter 21. Oh, okay. Verse 9 and 10. 21 verses 9 and 10. It says, whoever stays in this city will die by the sword. Sword. Famine or, famine or plague, but whoever goes out and surrenders to the Babylonians who are besieging you will live. He will escape with his life. I have determined to do this city harm and not good, declares the Lord. It will be given into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he will destroy it with fire. Is it 9 and 10, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So this represents the holy city. Um, of course, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar came in, we saw in Daniel, and, and, and destroyed the city. Uh, mm -hmm. That's God's city, right? Um, and then they had to go back and rebuild the temple and so on. Now, Revelation 18.10, what does that one tell us? Revelation 18.10, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that city, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. All right, so, so we have this great mighty city, uh, Babylon, and then uh, something is going to happen to that great and mighty city. All right, so let's see what happens to that city in Revelation 14 and verse 8. Revelation 14, 8, it says, Another angel, a second, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, she who made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. All right. So the great city, the mighty city, uh, Babylon, we know Babylon is modern-day Iraq, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we are told that, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, not Nebuchadnezzar, but uh, Saddam Hussein uh, uh, wanted to uh, recreate that that power that uh, the Babylon um, uh, Babylon had. Uh, and so now it tells us that uh, the angel said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. So we see this repeated twice. Uh, we know in the Bible that when something we repeat twice, it's for um, emphasis, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for emphasis. Uh, here also, uh, it could mean, uh, could it possibly mean that Babylon, the physical Babylon, was fallen twice. All right. Uh, because we have a situation where uh, Babylon uh, was 
came to prominence, but then it was destroyed, right? In uh, when uh, in 538 BC, it was destroyed then, and then it was destroyed again uh, when uh, the Medes and Persians took over uh, um, over the city. So Babylon itself, physical Babylon, uh, was destroyed twice. Now, we're trying to figure out what is Babylon is, okay? Uh, we know it is a, a, it's comparable to a physical Babylon way back then, which is opposing to God. Um, and this Babylon that we've seen here now, which is um, a system that, like the old Babylon, is opposed to God, right? Uh, in, in some way that it is opposed to God. So how can we identify what or who or what are the attributes of this Babylon? Mm. Uh, because we need to know, uh, because it, 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 it's creating uh, is, is a sense of confusion and it is creating uh, uh, problems in our world. So what did this Babylon do that we can identify who or what it is? So let's go back to Revelation 17. Uh, we're trying to find that out. Uh, we know that um, it, it's on, on its, its head is written uh, mud of harlots. Okay. So Mother, what are the characteristics of mother? Uh, we, we just celebrate Mother's Day. So a mother will have <laughs> a mother will have children, correct? Right? So the mother yes. has children. So if she's a mother of harlots, what does that mean? Multiple children. Multiple children <laughs> with uh if you're a harlot, that means you're not Faithful, Multiple right? disobedient, uh, defiant <laughs> children. So, so yeah. you're not faithful to your husband, right? Mm. Uh, 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 so you have children probably with uh, two or three, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 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 men. And so uh, the Bible tells, so let's read some verses before that. Uh, it says in verse, in verse 2, um, can someone read Revelation 17, verse 2? Revelation. Says with, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, it says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality, and with the wine of the whose, of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. Mm. Right. So uh, this woman committed uh, sexual immorality with the kings of the earth, right? Wow. Uh, and so it produces children that are not legitimate in terms of, you know, the marriage, uh, mm -hmm. marriage covenant in that sense. So uh, also it says uh, that they, they also in verse, in verse um, six, it says, I saw a woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. So, right. drunken with the blood of the saints, what do you think that is referring to? Uh, persecution. Persecution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so, this system, uh, 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 we're trying to identify it, one, is not faithful. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, persecute the saints. All right, didn't persecute, uh, you know, um, rebels, but the saints of God, right? The, the people of God. Mm -hmm. And so we look back at the dark ages, mm -hmm. right? And we see how uh, many of uh, Christians died mm -hmm. um, through the church. And, and, and one of the reasons, you know, Christianity has a bad name as well because of, of of um, things that people did under the church's name, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 killing people, uh, people uh, to the um, 
they tie their bodies to horses and uh, uh, one leg go the, uh, to the horse and then the other to another horse and, and drive them in the opposite direction, splitting mm -hmm. people's body in half. I mean, how can you do that in the name of God? I, I, I just don't understand that. Mm -hmm. right? So the church, uh, the, the, the system also persecuted um, the people. And there is another uh, interesting characteristic of um, of this. Uh, and, and one point I would like to add to yes. it, and because they did not want to follow the principle of that their church, the, the whatever they were teaching. Yep. Right? Yeah. Correct. Correct. And they're asking them to recant and recant. They refuse, mm. and mm -hmm. and they uh, they they persecuting them instead. And the church and state were one at that time based on who's in political power, you know, um, but they operated as one. They did. They did. And, and it's amazing how, you know, how they started with, with uh, for political reasons, you know, mm -hmm. Constantine came in and actually baptized him, his, himself, you know, <laughs> he, 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 he baptized his own self and claimed to be a Christian, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just to get the, the votes from the Jews and, 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 and so on. Uh, and so we have one system going about. So it also tells us that it made it, the 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 uh, the church or the system make the world or, or the harlots drunk with the wrath. Okay. So this woman is committing fornication and and is is teaching uh, something that is not in connection to the real husband. Right. Uh, so, what are those? What are those things that they are teaching that is is not connecting to to who the real uh, the real husband is? So, let's look at a couple of things here. Um, uh, Revelation seventeen. Uh, let's read one to three in full, so we can get a better understanding um, of that. So, Revelation seventeen one to three. Revelation 17, 1, 2, 3. Yes. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having, mm. sev having seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads and ten horns. All right. So we're going to get into heads and, 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 and horns a little later in, 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 uh, in the quarter. But for now, in verse, in verse 1, it says she sits on many waters, right? So waters... In prophecy represents uh, people, a lot of people who are there. Um, uh, so, in other words, the the horse is riding on, uh, or the, the 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 woman is riding on on on, on people. It, it has control of people in that sense. Uh, so he committed fornication, uh, and so he makes others drunk with the rats. In other words, is giving others that doctrine. Right, so so we're talking about doctrines now that this apostate church is 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 teaching and is causing others mm -hmm. to to get drunk with that same with that same um, drink. So, what are some of those things that um, we will say uh, the apostate church? Is, is teaching that is not faithful to scripture. So now the woman is not faithful to her husband, right? The husband is Jesus. And we know that Jesus said that uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one dot or, or crossing of a T or dot of an I will in no wise pass. That means that scripture uh, it must be um, fulfilled and therefore scripture is valid. All right, all of scripture. But um, the, the, the system or the, the apostate church came up with some new teaching that we call 
drunken wine that infected the world. And so what are some of those? Well, uh, one of them is, has to do with the changing of the Ten Commandments, right? So if you look at the, the, the Ten Commandments for the uh, Roman Catholic Church and the Ten Commandments for, uh, that's outlined in Revelation, you're going to see ten, right? However, when you, when you compare commandment to commandment, they're not the same. Yeah. So what they did is that they took out um, the, the Ten Commandments that said you should not um, make oh, graven no. images mm -hmm. and bow down to graven images. Mm -hmm. So they took that out. And in order to get ten, they split the last one in two. Mm -hmm. All right. So the last one is split in two, and, and they took out um, the graven images um, scripture. Now, why do you think they did that? What could be the reason for that? Well, I think if you look at Daniel's uh, view on on the same person, is is said that they were they also thought to change times and laws, mm -hmm. and so they believe that they have the authority to change what God has written and what God has said, and so they they believe that they have that type of authority, and so they they exercise their their supposed authority to change laws and times. Change laws and times, indeed. Um, another one is is the introduction of the of the mass, right? Uh, now, what's the difference between uh, the the Catholic mass and our communion? So I know that they believe that when they they bless the bread, I think that it mm -hmm. actually becomes Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so they're eating the flesh and the blood mm -hmm. and drinking the blood of Jesus. And we know that it's just a symbol mm -hmm. that, that we, we take an emblem that we remember what Jesus has done for us. And, and to remember to take in the teachings of Jesus and to absorb it into you know, our body, like you know, how we eat food. Right. But for them, they think it's actually Jesus. And so uh, that's, that's definitely not the case that's not what the bible teaches at all so indeed indeed so so that's you know uh, and that's why uh they believe in in in, in mass ever so frequently uh mm -hmm. because uh, instead of um we believe we believe that uh jesus is the bread of life and so as we partake of the word of god daily then we are you know we are blessed with with with, with the bread but for them, they, they have to take um, the physical bread. Mm -hmm. That's why the pandemic probably was uh, a situation. I don't know how they, how they dealt with that. Because, uh, <laughs> That'd be control. interesting to know. Yeah. 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 They were blessing it through the technology. <laughs> <laughs> I had to deal with that. Um, all right. So we have the, 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 the Ten Commandments uh, in terms of uh, idols. We have the, the Mass. Uh, as the communion uh, basically represent Christ's actual body and, and blood. The other one is the is the uh, the priesthood system, right? Now, what is their view on um, on priests and 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 priesthood? They do not have the same belief as we have priesthood of all believers. They believe mm. that the Pope is. Uh, the priest is imbued with a very specific power when he's ordained. <laughs> he is ordained and that power comes upon him. He he he's he can do anything he wants. He's he, he can give orders to anyone he replaces. It's like he replaced Christ on this earth. And because Christ was a male, only a man can be a, a priest. And we tend to follow this issue too. Well, in well, our we church. can't hit them too hard on that because we, uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to get that there. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because we really do have a lot of similarities. similarities in, yeah. Even in our worship service, yeah. we have similarities. How we stage the 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 the, the pulpit and everything, the we have similarities. <laughs> but we don't realize it. We don't realize it. But we have similarities. We do, we do. I, I, it was about the church, no? mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
So, we, you know, we have to also acknowledge that uh, we, uh, as Seventh Day Adventists, right? Um, we we did not, you know, come up with all of the Christian doctrines. Mm -mm. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, some of so we have uh, a lot of the Christian doctrines are are, are the same um, with with other churches, right? Mm -hmm. we, we have a few that our hymnals, even yeah. our hymnals, are the same. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So we borrowed a lot of stuff from the Catholic Church, and uh, and they also helped to expand um, some theology of uh, of certain things, and uh, that's why some people are, are upset with the uh, Trinity and all of that because they think it's you know um, Catholic base and whatever. Mm. It is. Uh, so a lot of the, the the Christian doctrines are very similar, uh, but we are highlighting someone some here that are totally um against what the scripture said all right so the scripture said that we have the priesthood of all believers that we can go boldly before the throne of god that we don't have to confess our sins to any man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, we don't have to confess our sins to any man and then we also have the immortality of the soul which is another uh, a doctrine that the world is in is, is drinking and being drunk with and um now when you die uh you go to you go to hell you go to heaven or you stay somewhere between hell and heaven and uh we can you know pay your way out of that and the church didn't make a lot of money uh, uh from from those from those things wow yeah. they still do masses for people who die and to go to heaven hmm. they still do masses but they're not still, they're not charging for that are they <laughs> they, they charge for special mass if you ask them to do it for your family you'll be charged it was like that when my mom was a Catholic. I was a Catholic too. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You pay for the mass. Mm. In fact, uh, they removed my name one time because I had to get communion. I was uh, coming for catechism and study and I fell asleep as a kid because I live far away. When I got there, I fell asleep. They got me out and my dad paid somebody in the church and they put my name back. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> It's still a money system. <laughs> mm. Mm. Forget Christianity. This is about yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we have, so these are some of the, uh, uh, the so, and also uh, baptism, right? Sprinkling. Uh, when, uh, according to scripture, uh, Jesus following Jesus' example uh, was baptism by immersion. So when we look at mm. um, many of these uh, doctrines, um the christian world is really uh is drunk with these uh because uh we don't even talk about the sabbath you know which is which is a major one uh the sabbath uh immortality of the soul uh, a lot of people uh believe in that and it's people are i don't know how you can live and and thinking that um your loved one is 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 in heaven looking down at your suffering so for example if i die and i go to heaven how can i be happy if my family down here is is is, is suffering can i be happy in heaven looking down at them mm. like uh so uh yeah, that's... you know it, it it's 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 imprisonment and so the 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 doctrine of the mortality of the soul leads people to uh it's suffering really indeed and so when you teach these kind of things and you tell somebody when you're dead you're dead it gives them freedom they can relax knowing that the loved one is not in in hell burning burning for um burning forever uh, mm -hmm. those those mm. those 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 are kind of doctrines um it's not liberating at all uh it, it makes you want to hate god to know that he is Keeping your loved one in hell, born forever. What kind of God, you know, would would, um, mm -hmm. would do that? All right. So, <clears throat> so she makes all of these uh, drunk uh, with the with with her false doctrine, and we see that uh, a lot of churches, even though they're not, uh, they look at themselves as separated, independent uh, from the mother church, mm -hmm. but they're still uh, following the teaching mm -hmm. of um, of the mother church. All right, so how do we, because a lot of times when we study prophecy, um, we don't 
come to like uh, application to ourselves, right? Everything is out there. And we are looking at uh, churches, we are looking at the Pope and, and all of these kind of things and whatever the Pope does. Now, how can we apply this whole thing to our life? Because it talks about uh, the, cent the, the scent of idolatry as we wrap up here. Idolatry, right? Um, mm. uh, worshiping of, of, uh, of images. But is idolatry only uh, graven images? <laughs> No, it can be other things too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's one more thing that I would like to add about uh, where it says uh Second Thessalonians 2, verse 4, that says that that system would oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, or mm -hmm. that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, mm -hmm. showing himself mm -hmm. that he is God. So that's another characteristic. Uh, Characteristic of of the church, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Jesus wants us to worship Him alone, and He is the God of God and the King of Kings. Nobody else can take His place. Yeah. Amen, amen, indeed. Uh, uh, and so we worship God. Uh, we avoid uh, idolatry. Uh, While the lesson points out um, idols and and all of that, they, there's also uh, other idols in our life and God hit idolatry because um, we 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 are focusing on these things we we are we may not be bowing down to them but we we worship them so whether it's your house your car uh, your wife your husband your boyfriend girlfriend um, your your education a lot of these things that uh, become first place in our lives our jobs yeah. our jobs mm. yes yes these uh, these <clears throat> Some idols. Yeah. Uh, it could be even good things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed. We could idolize our wife, our children. Yeah. Our children. Yeah. That's true. It's true. Our church. We could even idolize. Our pastor, our priest, yeah. mm -hmm. our anybody. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Anything Especially that we place above God. Bow down. Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Bow down pastor, that's a huge yeah. one. That's a huge mm. one. Many people just go to a past, whatever the pastor says, they just go along with it as compared to seeking God. So, yeah. Right. Wow. Not, not, not looking up scripture for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I... All right. So, uh, as we wrap up here now, uh, I'll, you know, anything that we miss here, or what would be um, your takeaway from, uh, from this lesson? As we, as we live in the end of time, uh, we're expecting certain things will happen, bear in mind that we are not sure exactly how these things are going to happen. Uh, uh, and so I don't want us to be like uh, the children of uh, Israel. They were waiting for the Messiah to come. The Messiah came, but they didn't recognize the Messiah. Wow. <laughs> because they had their own uh, personal views as, as to what is going to, um, is going to happen. So what's yeah. your take up? I think uh, for me, it's to look at the two women in Revelation, it's very contrasting on, because women in the Bible is supposed to be God's church. Mm -hmm. And so you could see this as two systems who believe that they're God's church and they're doing everything that they think is right, mm -hmm. but one is ultimately really wrong and he's making, and she's making others uh, wrong. So I think it's very important that we need to have the discernment on what is God's true church and what does that mean? And when you we study, we were focusing a lot on the 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 harlots of Babylon. And when we look at the woman in Revelation 12, we could see exactly the characteristics of what it really means to be part of God's true church. And I, I, I one thing I want to highlight is that the woman was clothed with the sun, moon, and stars, mm -hmm. right? And if you look at back in Genesis, what were the sun, moon, and stars? What was the purpose of them? Uh, mm -hmm. Genesis 1.14, it says, uh, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs, seasons, and for days and years. And so I think it relates to us as a church that we need to clearly make a distinction between what is light and what is darkness. Mm -hmm. And we need to warn the people of the signs of the times that we are living in. And, you know, because... We, it's very, very urgent and crucial uh, for us to be able to, to warn everybody that 
yeah, there is a false system of belief that you may think you're worshiping God, but you could be deceived. It says the very elect can be even deceived. And so we have to be very careful. And, you know, the sun also represents Christ's righteousness and we need to put on, you know, Christ. That's what the Bible says. And and the moon, when you look at the moon, it shares also could mean uh, the Bible, God's holy word. And, and we need to really study the Bible so that we could know exactly. And this is how we're able to discern what's right and what's wrong. And, and we had to be able to teach and share this and be witnesses for, 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 for the gospel because <laughs> this is the day we're living in where a lot of people will call darkness light and a lot of people will call evil good. And mm -hmm. so it's very important that we make those distinctions as clear as possible as, as witnesses of the gospel. Amen. Yeah. Amen indeed. I was thinking um, just to go along with what Pastor Fortunato uh, said, I was leaning towards the same thing. On Sunday, it talked about that, um, you know, how can we not be influenced and what our protection? Mm. And they talked about the full arm of God. And, and the verse 18, the last one, it says, you know, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. So not only are we to put the armor of God, but we're constantly supposed to be praying for enlightenment, just like what Pastor Fortunato was saying, for mm -hmm. discernment. Um, what tends to happen even from that time is that the harlot did not just appear and just set up rules. It slowly seeps in the little cultures, the little traditions, the little, let's fix this problem. And the same thing that the Jews did, the laws continue to increase, 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 increase that they could not even follow it. But it started off, we want to make sure that we won't fail. Right. And it's what you said, Pastor Sterling, from the beginning, let's have a day because, you know, nature needs a rest. It's those little things that make sense, mm -hmm. but without the spirit of discernment, we're going to mm -hmm. fall into that. But with the spirit of discernment, because we're constantly seeking God for guidance, we're going to say, well, it sounds good, but it doesn't mean it's good. It's like what Satan did in the beginning. It's all deceiving. So this harlot goes along and, and she is, um, she is uh, making these relationships with other people and they're all different. Like you said, the mother church was one way, but all the other churches that followed that came out of the mother's church, they still held on to some of those cultures and traditions. And so then she's able to use that to still keep them away from God's commandments. Mm. And even us as an Adventist church, we tend to even now, because we want to be more accommodating to people to come to church and feel you know, welcome in church, and we don't want to separate them from church. We are accepting certain cultures and traditions and making a norm. And that's how we eventually, even within the church, you know, it becomes tainted because Revelation talks about that was within the church. That's how it comes out of it because it's that system that was a God's command system at first, but lack of discernment, lack of continuing uh, worshiping God, seeking God, which is what happened with the, uh, Jerusalem, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar comes in, they lost that discernment because they stopped seeking God and started seeking the idol, which came in in such a deceiving way of subtlety. And that is what kept them away because they just thought, oh, this is okay. This little thing's okay. This is fine. That's what everyone's doing now. Let's just incorporate mm -hmm. that in our lifestyle. And it becomes an idol. And slowly God is, is no longer part of this new culture. And this church has now formed, which is supposed to be taking a stand against the mother church. And now it's become its own new church. And so this, this is why the parlor has different you know, entities that's coming around, but they're all doing the same thing and still missing the main point. And so mm. we are supposed to be seeking God daily for discernment because Satan has been in this world so long that he deceived Adam and Eve, who was created perfect. Mm. Imagine us, we cannot handle it without God's, the Holy Spirit discerning things to us. Wow, yes. amen. The Bible says, uh, if it was possible, even the elect, yeah. Elect. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Indeed. Exactly. Indeed. Exactly. Yes. That's a boozy. Jesus says that I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. So it's the, he's the only way. We cannot Amen. go to a man to be saved, to mm -hmm. confess our sins or anything like that. We can go directly to God and he will forgive us. And he, he only, he alone can save us. And he's the only one we need to worship. Mm -hmm. And we have to study so that we don't get deceived. So we know the truth because Jesus is the truth. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, uh, here you have it. Uh, thank you so much. 
as oh. um, uh, can I just uh, sorry. Yes, of course. I, I know you're completely. I, I wanted to share this this one poem also. That, yeah, you know, you know me. <laughs> yeah, we love our poems. That's that's so. what ends everything. It's a poem. <laughs> uh, th this one's entitled "Gray Area" and, and it's talking about discernment uh, and how we can discern. So it goes: How do you discern from right and wrong? Have we not been ignorant way too long? We think to know what is wrong and right when we have actually lost our sight. Study the word and we will see what God intended for us to be. We will then find his standard, thus revealing where we have erred. Follow along the life of Jesus and his spirit will continually seize us to will and do his good pleasure that we may in him measure. We have been content way too long in singing our own selfish song. Mm. Let us find Christ's faith and love and his righteousness up above. So let us not be blind to see to break from sin's captivity. Christ is knocking outside our heart. Let us invite him in and never part. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. All right. Uh, we thank you uh, for joining us uh, as we looked at uh, a city of confusion. And we see even today our world, uh, people confused. We live in a world of confusion. People don't know who they are. People don't know what is right from wrong. But the Bible is clear and we follow scripture. Amen. We pray that the spirit will be upon us all and enlighten us and prepare us for the coming crisis that is ahead. But we don't need not be afraid because if God is on our side, he has already won. Amen. 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 God bless you until we see you again next week. Be faithful uh, to the end. God, God bless. bless.